Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Babcock, and welcome to the sixth lecture in our series on Exodus, this one titled, God's Dwelling Place, the Tabernacle. Now, after God had completed disclosing his law to, to the people, he outlines a mechanism where he can dwell with the Israelites as they wander in the desert and then enter the promised land. And through this, he creates the outline of the tabernacle. The tabernacle sanctuary is God's sacred dwelling place in the midst of Israel's camp as the nation progressed from Mount Sinai to the banks of the Jordan River and into the promised land of Canaan. The tabernacle continued as the Lord's sanctuary through the time of the judges until the united monarchy when David and Solomon ultimately build a temple. The account of the tabernacle is divided into three sections. The first section is a direct discourse from Yahweh to Moses prescribing the specific elements like dimensions and furnishings of the sanctuary. In the second section, the discourse is interrupted by an act of rebellion within the camp, resulting in the creation of the golden calf. This third section returns to uh, all of the ideas of how Moses is to build um, the sanctuary and results in the year-long construction of the tent sanctuary while the Israelites are camped at Sinai. This third section repeats much of the earlier text, often word for word emphasizing upon the reader the importance of the material. Once completed, the glory of the Lord occupied the sacred space, and while not guaranteed, the Lord's presence continually manifested itself in the tabernacle throughout the balance of the Pentateuch. The Lord's presence was known because whenever the Israelites traveled, the cloud of the Lord's presence could be seen during the day and the fire of God's presence could be seen at night. The sacred space of God's sanctuary served three distinct functions. First, it served as God's royal space with all the trappings of a moving royal palace. Both the Israelites and Yahweh lived in a tented space. However, it is clear from the beginning of the dialogue that God's tented space is distinct from his people's space. It is to be seen as a royal tent. Second, the tabernacle was a holy space where God could dwell on earth. And finally, third, the sanctuary was a meeting space where God and mankind could dwell together. Exodus relates that Moses would talk to Yahweh from a tent uh, erected outside the camp. When anyone had a question of God, they would go near the tent of meeting and Moses on behalf would enter into the tent. The New Testament refocuses our view of the temple and, and tabernacle in Jerusalem in favor of another temple within the individual believer. As the church community and as a future eschatological holy sanctuary, the temple stands as an ideal image of God present with the believer. Mark records the coming destruction of, of the temple with the focus on Jesus as the new temple. This is exemplified when the curtain separating the Holy of Holies from the holy place is torn at Jesus' death. Jesus has removed the barrier between Yahweh and his creation. One of the primary roles of the tabernacle was a sacred space where humanity could atone for their sins and move into fellowship with their God. Jesus' death made obsolete the sacrifices of lambs and goats and bulls. The Apostle Paul equates the image of the tabernacle with the community of believers. 
In Ephesians, he utilizes the image of the church as God's tabernacle to show the unity of both Gentiles and Jews in this new body of believers. Building upon Jesus as the cornerstone of the temple, Paul writes that in Christ, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together into a dwelling of God in the Spirit. Finally, the New Testament views the tabernacle in eschatological terms. After the resurrection, Jesus goes to dwell with God as a minister in the sanctuary and in the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched. The earthly counterpart is depicted as a copy or a shadow of the heavenly sanctuary. The return of Jesus will usher in a new era with a new Jerusalem. In this eschatological age, similar to the Garden of Eden, there is no need for a temple as God is at last able to be in a direct and continuous fellowship with his people. John writes that when the new Jerusalem descends from heaven, the dwelling of God is with men and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God will be with them and be their God. There was no need for a temple because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. Neither the tabernacle nor the temple have survived the course of time. However, the truth of the tabernacle is far greater than a mere building or tent. We will now briefly explore the ongoing role of sacred presence in a modern Christian context and as it pertains to the individual Christian, the church, and eschatological hope. First, the tabernacle symbolically represents God's presence in the life of the individual Christian. Second, the tabernacle provides an example of God's presence in community, bringing God's imminence into view. And finally, the image of the tabernacle conveys God's presence for all time in heaven. Thanks for listening to this brief lecture on tabernacle and its role not only in the Pentateuch, but throughout the Bible and into the New Testament. Have a great day.